ripening fig trees overhanging the water's edge provide welcome food for shoals of hungry fish. The commotion attracts Dorado, known locally as the River Tiger. They patrol the feeding shoals, looking for a chance to strike. in the wings, ready to pick off any injured fish, are the piranhas. A feeding frenzy quickly develops. Piranha can strip a fish to the bone in minutes. It's March, and light returns to the high Arctic, sweeping away four months of darkness. A polar bear stirs. She has been in her den the whole winter. Her emergence marks the beginning of spring. After months of confinement underground, she toboggans down the slope, perhaps to clean her fur, perhaps for sheer joy. gaze out of their bright new world for the very first time. The female calls them, but this steep slope is not the easiest place to take your first steps. But they are hungry and eager to reach their mother, who's delayed feeding them on this special day. Now she lures them with the promise of milk, the only food the cubs have known since they were born, deaf and blind beneath the snow, some two months ago. Their mother has not eaten for five months and has lost half her body weight. Now she converts the last of her fat reserves into milk for her cubs. The spring sun brings warmth, but also a problem for the mother. It starts to melt the sea ice. That is where she hunts for the seals she needs to feed her cubs, and she must get there before the ice breaks up. For now, though, it's still minus 30 degrees, and the cubs must have the shelter of the den.
There is no other species on the planet that responds as quickly and as dramatically to the good times as the desert locust. Eggs that have remained in the ground for 20 years begin to hatch. The young locusts are known as hoppers, for at this stage they're flightless. They find new feeding grounds by following the smell of sprouting grass. Normally, it takes four weeks for hoppers to become adults. But when the conditions are right, as now, their development switches to the fast track. <laughs> As the vegetation in one place begins to run out, the winged adults release pheromones, scent messages, which tell others in the group that they must move on. And when groups merge, they form a swarm. locust eats its entire body weight every day and a whole swarm can consume literally hundreds of tons of vegetation. They have to keep on moving. The swarm travels with the wind. It's the most energy-saving way of flying. Following the flow of wind means that they're always heading toward areas of low pressure places where wind meets rain and vegetation starts to grow. As they fly, swarms join up with other swarms to form gigantic plagues several billion strong and as much as 40 miles wide. They will consume every edible thing that lies in their path. This is one of planet Earth's greatest spectacles. It's rarely seen on this scale, and it won't last long. Once the food has gone, the steady roar of a billion beating locust wings will once again be replaced by nothing more than the sound of the desert wind. Sailfish, three meters long, are closing in on prey. They will only use just enough energy to make their kill, never wasting a fin stroke. Nearly a hundred sailfish have surrounded a single school of bait fish. It's very rare to see so many of these hunters in one place. To herd their prey, the predators raise their huge dorsal fin. This time strike by one sailfish could fatally damage another, but each continually changes its color from blue to striped to black. That warns its companions of its intentions and also confuses the prey. As the shoal is driven nearer the surface, it comes within the range of the seabirds. Here in the open ocean, there is nowhere for the baitfish to hide.
sailfish live a high octane life. To survive, they must find prey daily. So their entire existence will be spent on the move. At the goose colony, it's high summer and eggs are hatching. The young all emerge within a day or two, a marvel of timing. The colony is now home to a million goslings. The fox is still gathering all she can get. Sometimes one mouth simply isn't enough. one will have to do. Not all food is stored. Some is needed right now. She has seven hungry cubs to feed. As their appetites grow, the mother must work tirelessly to raise her family. Only fat, healthy cubs will survive the Arctic winter. The vast majority of the goslings are still flourishing. Their parents lead them down to the safety of the water as soon as they're strong enough to make the journey. For the foxes, boom time has come to an end. But the mother has given her cubs the best possible start in life. The geese will continue grazing the tundra until the summer ends and they're forced to head south for the winter. <laughs> 